Is your German Shepherd getting really, really, really anxious every time you're leaving the home? Well, today we're going to try and solve that. Welcome back to the Fenrir German Shepherd Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the German Shepherd and then becoming a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own German Shepherd puppy. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload here on the German Shepherd Show. Today, we're going to be joining in a webinar that Will, the CEO and founder of FenrirCanineLeaders.com, has filmed all about separation anxiety and how to deal with that as a leader. So then, let's dive into one of our quickfire webinars about probably what is the most heartbreaking behaviour that as any canine behaviourist has to help people go through, and especially for the owners that are living with a dog with severe separation anxiety. It's a very heartbreaking it's an emotionally driven behavior that nobody wants to see a dog go through but the positive is that it can have extremely high rehabilitation rates to be very successful if you break it down and go through the process effectively now when it comes to separation anxiety it's one of those things that so many people uh, don't really think about especially when they're getting their new puppies and it's something that is always the case I try and stress to as many people as I can about the importance of being proactive and preemptive now don't worry I understand that people watching this whether you, if you're watching this as an owner in particular you're here because you want a fix to a dog that already has separation anxiety or if you're coming at it from the professional side as a trainer or a behaviorist you want to understand my approach to being able to help clients and potentially be you to be able to help your clients with separation anxiety but I want to take a second just to stress the importance of trying to encourage owners and people your clients uh, alike the importance of just putting the work in up front with separation anxiety uh, is one of those things it's a, it's a hard arduous process to go through to rehabilitate true separation anxiety and it's the epitome of just putting in the effort up front so that you never have to go through this in the first place so again let's jump into actual kind of modification and rehabilitation of separation anxiety now um, but it's very worth noting that if you can maybe you work with owners with puppies really make sure that as part of your methodology you're helping people be proactive and preemptive with separation anxiety because it's always the best way and the best approach hey guys very quickly i just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before it's the program that as a canine behaviorist i use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that i work with to high levels of success it is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. Right then, so let's dive into the first thing that must be done with all cases of separation anxiety. And we're going to get to kind of more why in a little bit. Um, and that is around determining, is it actually separation anxiety? And we're going to discuss that in a little bit more detail later on. But I want you to understand that as, as a behaviourist that's worked with lots of cases like this, I'm still helping people in particular online with cases like this. It's one of those things that actually can be done at a distance quite easily. Um, but being able to help people understand that do you have a dog that is suffering from severe legitimate separation anxiety or do you have a dog that is obnoxious and is displaying a learnt behavior to get what it wants which might be your attention to be let out of a crate to be let out of a room that you're confining it in being able to differentiate those two things can be very difficult for some owners as a professional it's usually quite easy to be able to go in and, and work out quite quickly which one it is and I must say that it is quite rare to have actual real separation anxiety and it's far more common to have a dog that's learnt that if it cries yelps and barks that it will be let out of the crate that it's in or the room that it's um, that it's in so we always start with kind of two things the first thing is exercise exercise 
exercise. A tired dog is a happy dog. Let's give you an example over there. That dog over there, Sully, my Labrador, working lab, will work and run for hours and hours on end. He has zero separation anxiety and will not move from that comfortable spot on the sofa over there for the next six hours while we're working today. And that is because he's been out for two hours this morning, hiking and doing some retrieval work from water. He is exhausted and he is far too tired to be worrying about being pent up. Now I could put him in my office next door. He was in the crate in the back of the van going to and from Cannot Chase where we took him. We don't hear a peep from him because he's content, he's tired, and he's blown off that excess energy. It couldn't be more important, so always start with drastically increasing exercise. It just releases that pent-up frustration, that pent-up anxiety, and a dog will then be much happier to kind of give over to just relaxing, calming down, and settling down. One of the most common causes of more the obnoxious behaviours is just simply too much pent up energy they're bored and it's easy for them to bark yap run around dig up things chew things destroy things all the symptoms of separation anxiety uh, might actually simply just be a bored dog that's got pent up energy um, and just simply by increasing the amount of exercise will fix the separation anxiety which then does take us on to what is always the hardest bit and now this is where um we like to do I like to do this with all of the people that I work with just because I think it is the base and the foundation of everything is relationship and leadership that relationship comes from excellent leadership on the owner's part if you're a calm consistent canine leader you can build a superb relationship with your dog where you can communicate effectively with them both the things that you do want and the things that you don't want um, and that might be around obnoxious excessive barking that might be deemed separation anxiety but like I say it might actually just be an obnoxious dog with uh, a learnt behaviour around this kind of excessive uh, crying, yelping, barking, digging, scratching, destroying things. Again, the symptoms of separation anxiety. So the way we help our clients with that is going through our Fenrir bootcamp process. We do have an online version of it, by the way, if you're interested. There'll be a link in the description box below. But what we do is we go through that process with our owners to allow them to restructure that relationship. As part of that process, naturally, we put in a lot more exercise. And again, with separation anxiety, it's a month-long process. Um, and by giving it to our owners as kind of the micro issue of separation anxiety what's actually happening is they're fixing the macro issue which is around leadership relationship and communication which then inherently by treating that at the root cause at the macro level then makes these micro issues disappear so that's something that i highly encourage that if you're a professional um, you go through a process like that with the owners that you're helping or if you're watching this as an owner's perspective putting yourself through something like that going through that process with your dog so you can restructure that relationship by doing that first drastically increasing the exercise i'd probably say eight times out of ten that will fix separation anxiety itself and then the remaining two times out of 10 will be then much easier to deal with because you now have that relationship, that structure, those rules, boundaries and expectations and the inherent trust from the dog in you as its leader, which then makes the actual modification and rehabilitation of real separation anxiety go far much smoother than just trying to jump into those methods. Because if you've got a dog with true separation anxiety, it often comes from fear, anxiety, which stems, the root cause of that is a lack of leadership uh, and a lack of trust in the guidance and direction of that leader in that scenario. So again, exercise, restructuring the relationship utilizing our boot camp process um, will fix the vast majority of separation anxiety issues and then if it doesn't we can then move into probably the realms of okay we now have a severe legitimate case of real separation anxiety as opposed to obnoxious learnt behaviors and this is where we then have to go through kind of a, a modification program of the behavior we have to start desensitizing triggers of separation anxiety and we have to rehabilitate and modify the behaviors 
of those triggers to allow the dog to settle, to be content, um, and to not associate those triggers of being left on its own with the induction of true panic, which is what true separation anxiety is. The best way you can describe it in a dog's perspective um, is that it would be like somebody that has a true phobia of spiders. That level of panic of being left on their own is what real separation anxiety is. And like I say, that's actually quite rare. The more prevalent issue is just obnoxious learnt behaviours that by going through those other processes will have been addressed by now and if we're still then left with extreme actual separation anxiety well at least we've tired our dog out we've released a lot of pent-up energy through our addition of a, di a lot more exercise and we've also restructured the relationship so the dog inherently trusts us more and we have a better communication pathway through that relationship which then will allow us to now do these kind of modification programs. So what we need to do is you need to go through a, a very quick, again, this is kind of a quick fire breakdown. We could do whole day long seminars on separation anxiety, but I want this to not run on for too long. It's a quick fire webinar version. So we need to desensitize the triggers. Now a dog with real separation anxiety will have a trigger associated with the anxiety. It might be picking up the keys because they know you're leaving. It might be you tying up your shoes, putting your coat on. What we want to do is desensitize those triggers. So we're going to rub the keys but we're not going to go anywhere we're going to put our shoes on but we're not going to go anywhere we're going to put our shoes on and if the dog doesn't freak out we're then going to reward that behavior and we want to try and flip the script on where the dog associates that trigger as an extreme negative that is then leading to the panic uh, like that fight or flight response which is then in causing the true separation anxiety we want to kind of flip that on the script it takes patience but it it, like I say, it has extremely high success rates. So we go through desensitizing those triggers, trying to associate a positive with those triggers. One of the best things that I like to do is I think crate training with separation anxiety is actually huge. You have to be very patient and you want to make the association of the crate an incredibly positive thing. So I'd probably go through like a two week positive association phase of the crate before ever locking the dog in the crate, just to make the crate an incredibly positive, lovely, warm, inviting, happy association with the dog with the crate. We then start to utilize what I would use a frozen Kong, fill it full of beautiful meat pate and freeze it. And then as part of the desensitizing of the triggers, what I would do is the dog, I'd get the dog to sniff the Kong, put it in the crate, but lock the door. Don't let the dog go in. So the dog will be trying to get find a way into the crate and they love the crate and they want to get in there. I would then display that trigger, might be a jingling of the keys, it might be tying my laces up. Once that trigger has been established, I then open the door to the crate and give them access to the crate and shut the door behind them and then don't go anywhere. Then you take the trigger away, so I might take the shoes off, put the keys back in the bowl, open the crate door and back open. And again, it's about descent, not only desensitizing the trigger, but going a step further of actually creating an incredibly positive connotation with it. Doing that over and over, with that frozen Kong and that like blocking of access to something that is extremely delicious for the dog over time then when those triggers are being used because you actually need to leave means that the dog will start to associate you leaving with an exciting thing and want almost wanting you to go because they know that well when you go I get access to this frozen Kong so hurry up mate off you go I'm really looking forward to you going because I get access to this wonderful thing then as we build up on that so again we're giving them access we then might walk out of the door for one second and walk back in take shoes and keys off and go through that process then two seconds and five seconds and 10 seconds back to five seconds up to 20 seconds back to 10 seconds up to 30 seconds and we're just building up gradually 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 and building up to a place where we build a really positive association with you leaving they're in their lovely wonderful calm inviting space that we've built around positive association with the crate we've built in utilizing something like a frozen kong to get them to build actually an excitement trigger about you leaving because they want you to go and what we're also going to do is then when we go in we need to remove all emotion we need to make leaving an emotionless affair we also need to make coming home a completely emotionless affair so every time we leave the dog there's no saying goodbyes there's no oh it's going to be okay buddy i'll be back soon again it's nonsense the dog has no idea all you're doing is adding in that anxious energy into the situation we want to be calm consistent leaders that we just go 
when we come back we don't go oh buddy so good to see you and the dog's been shaking and you come in and then you reinforce that anxious behavior we're going to come back in and we're going to ignore the dog until they're calm and relaxed when they're calm and relaxed then we can go in and greet the dog say hello praise them let them out play with them and we build up that connotation not only are we desensitizing the triggers but we're actually creating incredibly positive associations with those same triggers we're also desensitizing the leaving and coming from the that in itself is a trigger but by us making that an emotionless cold affair we're desensitizing the coming and going part of the process and then ignoring the dog until they're displaying calm quiet behaviors means that we're also reinforcing the desirable behavior which is to be relaxed calm and quiet we do that process you can do that alongside the boot camp you can do it after the boot camp there's lots of different ways that you can tackle this problem but it has an incredibly high success rate and it's just about going through the process consistently now the next kind of caveat to that is people that work obviously that kind of going through a process like that that is a, a long process and you can't have a, a lot of people can't just have a month off work to deal with this problem so I highly recommend saying right <clears throat> from the first of next month we're going to deal with separation anxiety we're going to get on top of this um, we're given that whole month and I'm going to pay to take my dog to doggy daycare every single day so while we're going through that process at no point what you don't want to do is take one step forward while you're going through this process but then have to leave for eight hours put them back into that fight or flight response and then them lose their minds and you're taking 10 steps back it can make the process much much more difficult so either have take the dog to a friend's house where they can stay and just remove the issue altogether control the variables take that separation anxiety off the table completely and then we can go in and set our dogs up for success going through a rehabilitation program like this if you can do that send to a dog's home pay somebody not to a dog's home to um a friend's home send the dog to a friend's home for the day while you're out at work take them to a doggy daycare have a dog sitter come and sit at your house find somebody that will kind of do you a favor and will come and chill at your house for the day every day for that month while you're going through this rehabilitation program and then throughout that program you're building up that slowly time of them being left on their own like we discussed from one second to five seconds and you'll be surprised if you're drilling that a few times a day you can quickly get to five minutes 10 minutes 20 half an hour an hour and by the time you get to those kind of numbers you're pretty much on top of the problem um and then it's just extending that out to the amount of time and then what you might find is okay well we're going to do we've found a bit of a threshold at an hour and we're going to now work on getting it from an hour to two hours um and we get it to two hours okay now we're going to have somebody come over um halfway through the morning at lunch and then halfway through the afternoon to break it up a little bit while we try and stretch it out to that full day that's kind of my quick breakdown like i say you could do multiple day seminars on the real details of separation anxiety but that's kind of the overarching theory determine is it obnoxious learnt behavior is it true separation anxiety regardless we need to put in a lot more exercise and we need to restructure the relationship if that doesn't cure it which if it's obnoxious learnt behavior that will cure the problem then we've got real separation anxiety if we have got real separation anxiety then we go through a modification and rehabilitation protocol like that and you'll come out the other end with a dog that is content and happy to be left on their own so i hope that helps get out there help your clients with this issue help your dog with this issue and i promise you will have much happier healthier dogs out there because of it so there it is guys some really useful training tips that you can start putting into practice straight away separation anxiety is a really difficult thing but it's so important to deal with and nip in the bud as soon as you possibly can so make sure you start putting these skills that will spoke about into practice so that you don't have this issue with your german shepherd thank you so much for watching today's video guys i really hope you enjoyed it if so get involved in the comments down below let us know how you're getting on with your training with your very own german Shepherd. Don't forget to like and subscribe this to this channel and I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir German Shepherd Show.